For the build show today, we're talking floor trusses. We just got finished framing this house and you can see how open these floor trusses are. In fact, the plumber started his top out and look at that, that's a thing of beauty. All that open space meant that the plumber didn't cut anything on that floor truss. Now in my 30 years of building, I've done solid sawn, you know, two by eight, two by 10, two by 12 floors. I've done TJIs. In fact, I use some of those at my personal build, but the vast majority of the houses I've built over the last 15 years or so, I've used these floor trusses. So in the build show today, we're gonna go into all the pros and cons of these floor systems, including the costs. And we're gonna really dig deep on why I think floor trusses are the way to go for builders. Today's build show all about floor trusses. Let's get going. All right, guys, let me introduce you to Ray, the truss guy from Builders First Source. Now, I know you do more than just trusses, Ray, but yes, uh, I appreciate you joining me. I want to talk to these guys about reasons why we like floor trusses over other floor systems. And I do want to point out that we're in Texas. We're slab on grade on almost all our projects. So when we think about floor trusses and the space that they're being used, there's a lot of services in there because I don't have a basement to put those. Talk to me about openness, Ray. What's, what's the big benefit of openness on floor trusses? Yes, sir. Most of the time, we're gonna have floor trusses that are 24 inch on center. Mm -hmm. Very easy for the, the, the trades to come in and deck the floors. We're gonna try to make sure we miss all our plumbing flanges, et cetera, all our <laughs> drop downs. And it's a, it's a whole lot easier for all of our trades to run all their products, the electricians, the plumbers, any of the other, the, uh, other gentlemen that are gonna be working. You know, I want to point out too that, uh, you know, for instance, right here, I've got this big open block space, a big open square on these trusses. And usually that's designed in by the builder and the truss manufacturer, Builder's First Source, as a trunk line or a line for ducting. So, you know, in this case, 24 inch on center trusses, I think these are 18 inch deep at this house. Yes, sir. So we've got a lot of open space that we can run a pretty serious duct through there. But in general, when the trades come, when we think about this openness, there's no drilling needed. They're gonna drill in walls for uh, you know, plumbing runs or, or maybe uh, electrical wires. Electricians, plumbers, no saw needed. And that's one of the things I really like about these open web trusses is just giant space for all kinds of things. Now you mentioned 24 inch on center array. Um, Talk to me about that big two by four flange on the top and the bottom. Is there a benefit to that? Yes, sir. Way more, way more uh, horizontal space for you to be able to glue, screw, nail, however you're gonna apply that, that decking to the deal for a better uh, attachment to that to top core, that floor truss. And of course, less squeaks, moans, groans, all those accompanying Bounce, sounds. Bounce, all that, that kind of stuff. Bounce that we're really trying to avoid. Yeah, so let's, let's break that down. There's two things I want to mention on that. You know, I've been using floor trusses a long time. I've never had a callback for squeaks or for bounce, whereas on houses that have solid sawn lumber that I've been in, that have been built in the last even 10 years, I've been in upstairs places where the floor has some shake and you walk by that china cabinet and as you walk by, you can kind of see the dishes rattle a little bit. I've never had that problem with floor trusses. Talk to me about the engineering behind that. Is the builder specifically saying to the truss engineer, here's the stiffness rating I'm looking for, or is that kind of baked in? That, that is baked in, and a lot of the times the structural plans that we receive from the builder will, be, will have that called out. Uh, so we will follow that L over D, 360 over 240 for our floor trusses. Uh, and that's just our stiffness that we're looking for to try to achieve. So the engineering that we run through to design the floor trusses We'll follow that along and place the right material grades and the right size plates so that we get the stiffness that we're looking for. Yeah, I like that. And then along with that stiffness, you mentioned we've got a two by four top cord, which gives me as the builder and my framing crew a lot of glue surface. Uh, you know, back in the old days when I was a production builder, solid sawn lumber, commodity uh, kind of OSB decking products, we had a lot of squeaks, even though we tried to glue them when we even uh, tried to screw them. Whereas Houses these days, when I'm using floor trusses, two by four floor trusses, 24 inch on center, three quarter or inch and an eighth uh, Huber Advantech decking. We're putting a nice fat bead of Advantech glue on there, which is an all polyurethane glue. And man, that bonds the Advantech tenaciously such that I don't actually don't screw any of my floors. I only nail, and I think of those nails as clamps more than anything, because it's that glue that really makes those floors 
uh, squeak free. And in fact, Huber actually has a squeak free guarantee if you follow their system and, and, uh, and their guidelines. And I would say that's been my experience. Let's switch gears. Let's talk about cost a little bit. Is this a cost savings to go to floor trusses compared to TJIs or compared to solid sun or is it the opposite? It is the floor truss package will cost a little bit more than say your, uh, your TJs or a solid sun uh, dimensional package. Okay. Um, the biggest thing that we're going to save here is time uh, as far as installation and ease of use. Uh, then we will also save on waste because we're not going to have a lot of cuts and fall off, et cetera, to dump, uh, to fall really into not, the dump. Right? None. Shouldn't be any. Yeah. Uh, and they are, all, they are all designed to fit. So you're going to have an, the exact span from wall to wall to cover that. Yeah. So this truss package specifically designed for this house. Yes, sir. Keeping an account for where I've got plumbing, you know, where I've got a toilet, let's say, and a flange needs to come down like we've got right over here keeping an account for interior load bearing walls, yes, that sort of thing. Let's talk actual numbers in this house. This is a 4,000 square foot framed house, a little over 3,000 or right at 3,000 living space. What's this house cost for the floor truss package roughly? Uh, I believe this was around $7,500. Yeah, that sounds about uh, right. TJ, the TJ uh, iJoyce pack would be, I'd say it's $6,500, $6,700. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about 15%, maybe 20% more for a floor truss package uh, than TJI's, let's say, or than solid sawn lumber. One of the big benefits for me, though, is that openness means that I don't make any mistakes. Over the years of using TJI's, I used a lot of them in the 90s. Uh, we had issues where someone would drill in the wrong spot, and you've got to show your inspector, here's the plan from the... TJI manufacturer that shows where they can and where they can't drill. And oftentimes we'd make a mistake on the job. You know, the plumber drilled in the wrong spot or over drilled. Then I'd have to get an engineer involved. I'd have to get the framer back to fix it. And poof, there goes your savings between TJIs and floor trusses by making, uh, you know, one mistake on over drilling or over spanning or whatever it happens to be. Um, actually, that brings a good point. We haven't talked about this yet. Talk to me about span on floor trusses compared to TJIs or solid sawn lumber. Yes, sir. So floor trusses, we're gonna be able to span a little bit longer than a, say a TJ, especially a dimensional lumber. Uh, clear span without picking up interior bearings, which of course upstairs will save us some more money as far yeah. as picking up the, the loads going down to the, to the foundation. Um, we do have a saving, uh, saying that deeper is cheaper. A lot of the times when we have a smaller comparable uh, depth of floor trusses to TJIs, 14s, 12s, 16s, mm -hmm. that same floor truss can be uh, extremely less expensive by going to an 18 inch oh, floor that's truss. Interesting. So a 14 versus an 18, you might actually save money by going deeper. Yes, sir, 100%. The other benefit of going deeper then is I've got, let's say, a bigger space for a trunk line, uh, potentially. And I know over the years, uh, we've seen some plans that we've built that come in with a 16 inch truss space. And we've gone back to you as our truss manufacturer and said, actually, I want to make these taller and I got to adjust my sheathing and my height of the house. But that gives me that extra depth, which can be really, really handy. And it's interesting to hear that that could actually cost less money for a deeper truss. Yes, sir. And any any time we have any kind of additional loading, say uh, if a builder comes to us and says, "Hey, we've got a pool table, uh, water jacuzzi, heater, a water heater, and, and H you know any HVAC, anything like that," we're going to load that into the floor trusses and and make sure that we've got all that covered as far as so we stay away from the squeaks, the deflection, any of, any of those other issues. That's a great point. And I do want to mention too, one of the benefits of floor trusses for me over the years is I do a lot of zero entrance uh, curbless showers. And when I do those, I really want that shower floor to be dropped a couple inches. And it's really easy for me to say to the BFS truss engineers, hey, give me a four inch drop in this master shower upstairs, let's say. They build it in right to the trusses, super easy for the framers. And then I've got a four inch drop right at that curb uh, or curbless shower, I should say. That's a huge benefit on floor trusses. Yes, sir. Ray, talk to me about some cons on floor trusses compared to TJIs or uh, or solid sawn. Yes, sir. Uh, the the first one would be the weight. They are individually a little heavier yeah. than say a TJ or a two by twelve. Obviously, that's uh, that's got to be taken into an account. Ray, I think another con that gets brought up sometimes with floor trusses is cost, and I think we kind of address that. 
They typically are gonna be a little bit more expensive than some of the other options, but I think that's a, a worthwhile expense, even on a house like this that we're building at a very tight budget uh, for a, what I would consider a middle-class uh, house uh, like this. But talk to me about fire. You know, over the years when I've talked about any kind of trusses, I've had a lot of comments from firefighters that trusses are less stable in a fire compared to, let's say, solid sawn lumber. Yeah, I, I can understand that sentiment. Uh, and a lot of the times that's as far as an individual, individual truss will be concerned. But these packages are designed to work as a, as a set. They are all a, as a package. So when they're when the rat runs are put in correctly, the, the lateral bracing, et cetera, they function as a unit. And I would argue that as that, that damages one particular piece, one particular set of these, tr one truss is mm -hmm. damaged, it still functions as a unit. Yeah, so in other words, we're not gonna see a systematic wide failure where the floor caves in uh, with a smallish fire uh, just in this one spot. Now, obviously, if the whole house is ablaze, uh, these will fail at some point, yeah. and potentially you could go longer with a solid song because there's more burn. But in general, new houses don't burn down as often as old houses do and are less fire prone. Um, but to my firefighter friends out there, I think that is a valid point. And if you're building a house that's fire is your number one concern, you might also consider not using lumber. Uh, you know, lumber is the number one way to build a house uh, in America for a reason. We have amazing lumber resources. We build 99% of our houses with lumber, but if you build a house in Mexico or the Dominican Republic or Haiti or somewhere else, you're not building your house typically out of lumber. You're building out of concrete or cinder block where you don't have fire issues. So if fire is a number one concern for you, uh, you know, you might consider not using wood at all. Any final cons that you can think of, Ray, on floor trusses? Uh, well, they are deeper uh, compared to uh, a TJ or a... Uh, a dimensional product, a two by 10, two by eight that you mm -hmm. could span. So for, for shorter spans, they do, uh, they will have a, a, a lower profile and a whole lot less space between the webs and the duct yeah. work to make that shorter span work. Sure. So when we have a shorter uh, span, the 10s, the 12s, the, the 15 feet, sometimes those TJs or those dimensional products would be a cost saving. Yeah, that makes sense. And you also do need to think about height restrictions for houses. A lot of places in Austin, Texas, where I build have a 32 foot ridge height limitation. And we have bumped up into, hey, if we want nine foot ceilings and 18 inch trusses and this type of roof, we're gonna be pushing up against that ceiling of regulations. So that, could, that certainly could be a concern and something you need to talk about with your architect. Ray, really appreciate it, man. My Thank pleasure, you so sir. Much Thank you very your, much. Uh, for all your help today. Guys, Builders First Source, one of my major sponsors. They've been uh, my main source of lumber, windows, interior trim for the last 20 years. If you don't have a BFS uh, person you're working with, I highly recommend these guys. They've got like 500 locations around the U.S., and almost every one of those has a trust department where Ray, the Ray of your location, can get you set up with an engineer to design a truss, a floor truss package or potentially a roof truss package. But if you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. You know, we've got new content here on The Build Show every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Instagram or TikTok. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.